we're gonna do some space capes I think tonight because you know reasons why not I did this one last oh gosh I think it was maybe about a month ago or so I wanted to do one before this but you know it just uh, I think we ended up painting some miniatures instead we're gonna try this painting over here see that one on the left hand side that's one that I did years ago and I thought it'd be really 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 fun to give that one another shot now we have our our little canvas here which is just a piece of crescent illustration board hot press by the way it's divided up into these nine nine segments here and each one of these nine is actually the same aspect ratio as the whole thing so each one of these is sort of like its own mini painting when you look at this you can kind of see where the center of interest is falling. Nothing down the center, right? Nothing down the center here. It's always somewhere off center. It's a really important thing when you're working with your composition. You want it to be somewhere near these four points. You don't want it to be right in the center. You sure don't want it down here or way up here, or off in the corner. You want to have balance. It's a really important thing. I know it's it's kind of a weird esoteric kind of a concept there but we'll go over it more as we move along here now paint wise I think you can say especially again look at that the picture over there Egyptian violet indigo even ultramarine blue I think those are gonna have some significant impact haven't actually had a chance to use the ultramarine blue in any of my 2d stuff yet so that should be very fun you got some radiance out here I think the violet and magenta and the blue are going to be our big focuses here. Probably not so much of the turquoise or the green or even the yellow. We do have the Mars black sitting out here, eh, you know, for whatever. I'm just going to be really curious to see what, what it's like to be able to do this with the oils because that one was done with acrylics back in the day. See, we push it past the center line here. Nah, Sarge, and uh, that's... <laughs> That is fantastic news, no doubt. Oh, look at this. Look at this. See where this is going to end up here? Look at this. It's going to end up run out one of these spots right over here. And uh, and it's, it, it sounds like it's going to be kind of a minimal thing even at that, right? Even at that, that's, that's still going to be... It's not like one of the super invasive scans either. So that is fantastic news for you. Oh, look at this. See that? Look where that's going to fall. That's going to fall right over here. This is our uh, Jupiter-sized world. And then uh, another little rock sitting over here. How's about right there? I mean, we might change that around. We also have a little bit of a background galaxy type of a thing there. Ah, uh, you know, Sarge, I seem to remember that. Uh, you've had that a couple of times, haven't you? Yeah, you've had that more than, I think, two or three times. I've heard you mention the Philippine chicken, so that sounds like a household favorite for sure. Now here, I'm not going to do too much with the, the drawing phase of this because uh, we're just going to be throwing a lot of colors in here. Lots of colors. Now, where did our, our, uh, our new Kathy miniature go? Is that, oh, okay, it's over here. I just want to make sure we got this thing. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's bring out some here, and then our Jupiter-like planet. Going to have some clouds, and you can see a lot of perspective here, right? Lots of perspective there. Mm. Now let's flatten this out just a smidge. Uh, I forgot to send Armored Wolf a message, so hopefully. Uh, Armored Wolf will see the, the thing. I'll just have to apologize to him. It's, it's been a little bit of a weird couple of days here. Well, weird several days here. All right, there we are. All right, so there's our horizon line again above that halfway point there. Just like here, you can see this kind of goes halfway or beyond the halfway point. Otherwise, it would stop right about here. You can see we continue this all the way out to here. This pushed is not too far into the corner but again you can see we have some inflection points here where there could be some interest oh yeah Let, let's uh, bring in a little bit more of our stone and rock here like so now I'm just going to take a quick little image of this here 
quick little picture of this, and then we're going to just start slapping some paint on there. So, of course, uh, that didn't want to uh, cooperate here. Let me get some more batteries here. Hopefully these are going to be a little bit better. So I apologize for the, for the pause here, but this ancient camera doesn't do so well with the batteries here. All right, let's do this. There we go. So it's a, yeah, really ancient camera right there. Hey, Pendrick. Uh, so Pendrick, I have not seen those. Uh, Pendrick, oh gosh. If you could send me uh, an Instagram message just to remind me, maybe we uh, <laughs> maybe we could have some fun painting that next week. So yeah, if you don't mind, maybe shooting me a message just on Instagram. Say hey, you know, check out the uh, the new pictures of uh, a Neptune and stuff because uh, that would be pretty fun, don't you think? Yeah, that just uh, just shoot me some kind of reminder. Hey, Unreal, nice to see you again. So again, everything here, just so much chaos here. No way I'm going to be aware of that sort of stuff, unfortunately. I, there was a time where I would have been super aware of it, but that time is not now. Now I am. Look at this. Look at this. It's kind of like a watercolor, right? Look at that. Yeah, you wouldn't think that's oil paint, would you? Ah, look at this. See? It's almost like a watercolor instead of an oil painting. Ooh, let's get uh, some of our quinacrinol magenta out here. Yeah. Look at that. It's almost like a watercolor. People would say, that's not an oil painting. That's a watercolor. Oh, thanks, Pendrake. Appreciate that. And thanks for, uh, thanks for spotting that. So, Unreal, I hope things are going okay for you as well. I uh, might have to throw some more of that quinacrinol magenta out here. Again, just throwing this on here. <laughs> it's uh, deliciously ugly. It is absolutely deliciously ugly right now. Look at that. Look at this nice and ugly, just the way it should be for any sort of pre-glaze. More of our Egyptian vial. A little bit of the... Uh, yeah, let's have a little bit of our ultramarine blue flash in there. Darken that edge too. Now that indigo is very much a greenish color. <laughs> Look at how dark that is, huh? That's nice and dark. More of our thinner here. We want the moon there, galaxy type stuff there. A little bit more of our Egyptian violet, maybe. Uh, over here, too. Because uh, why not? Why not? Now, let that get a little darker up there, too. Because when we start hitting this with our, our lighter colors, we'll make a big, big splash. Big difference. Again, it's almost like a watercolor at this point. More of the uh, ultramarine blue. Now, what we're going to start to do is add a little bit of our lighter colors in here. Big brushes. Big old brushes. Uh, how's about some of that radiant violet here? Still going to use a decent amount of thinner, though. Fair amount of thinner. We already have stuff on the uh, already on our board here. So look at this. Looky here. Fills that in nicely. Starts to get some color in there. Let that start to blend with some of the things we already have in place. There you go. Nice and messy. So Jamie, what were you uh what were you painting on stream there? Alright, so Sarge, you have a good one. You have a good one. So I'll yeah, I'll let you know a little bit more about that there, Sarge. It was uh, certainly an interesting 
certainly interesting. That's the, no doubt about that. All right, let me get some of this. Uh, this is the radiant blue. It's not a white. Might look that way. Rest assured, it is uh, definitely not white. Now, let's uh, use something here as a blending brush, perhaps. Oh, look at this. Here, let's uh, throw a little bit more of that in there. Some of the radiant magenta. A little more of our radiant magenta out here. Bingo, there we are. Quinacrinol magenta. Ah, oh, some Stormlight Archive minis from Brotherwise Games. Ah, doing a Kickstarter. Hey, hey, bud, how you doing? Nice to see you again. Thanks so much for joining me one more time. And everybody, please check out the link that Jamie just posted. Jamie just posted a link again. Uh, working on that. Oh, look at this. See? See how this is uh, all of a sudden? It's not quite so... quite as hard of an edge anymore. It starts to get a little bit softer with that blend. Maybe a little bit more of our radiant magenta in there. We still have to put our planet back here. We haven't forgotten that. There. Hmm. Use this. Again, blending brush. It's the same thing we do with the miniatures. You think there's uh, any difference between the approach with this and a miniature? Nah. Same approach. Hey, surface tension, how you doing? So surface tension, if, <laughs> if I was to do a painting of Earth, which I should do. Ah, surface tension, I should do that. Would that be a flat Earth theory? If I was to paint Earth on <laughs> on one of our boards, would it be a flat Earth? I think it... <laughs> uh, sorry about that, couldn't resist. Hey, again, of the Greaster, how you doing? Let me keep going here with some of our, again, some of our light there. And we're going to get some clouds in here on our not Jupiter, Jupiter. So nice to see you again, Gandalf the Graster. I hope that you're doing well. So this is uh, basically mostly thinner. Mostly just thinner. Making sure that we have all of the areas covered and up. Uh, I think we have, oh, um, yes, we do. So think of it when we're working on our miniature and we do something like the pre-glaze, something like this as a pre-glaze, then we start to work in our lighter opaque colors. Guess what? We're doing the same thing here. Now I'm going to take a quick picture of that before we get too far along because I want to show that initial blending right there. Now, of course, Gandalf the Greyster knows that before the breaking of the world and the fall of Beleriand, Middle-earth was also flat, was it not? Now, look at this. We have Arid. Arid, you can't wife. How you doing? Thank you so much for the raid, Arid. Well, I I'm not going to ask you. I'll just let you tell me. I'll just let you tell me if there's any good news on a certain front. I won't ask beyond that. But here's hoping that there was. I, I don't want to don't want to put any stress on that. But Ira, thank you so much for the raid, and of course we'll welcome in our raiders. We are working on some 2D art. Yeah, that's a piece of crescent illustration board, and this is what we did mm, about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Oh, geez, four weeks ago! Holy smokes! I think it was only three, but this was one of our spacecapes that we did with our lovely oil paints. Hey, legends! Nice to see you again. Now, let's, uh, so you can see we're already getting into some smoother blends here. See, we're going to take our blending brush. Look at that. See how that gets smoother and smoother. That, you should have seen what that looked like. This initially looked like this down here. So, uh, again, Arid, I, I hope that there's some better news on that front. I know that... Uh, 
that's not necessarily going to be the case I hope it is I really hope that's the case that there's some good news for you we're just throwing in some of the quinacinone magenta here I'm trying to get rid of some of the edges of these clouds let's get a little bit more of our quinacinone magenta in here there we go that's what we want to see now the radiant magenta ah uh, well sorry there's no news there I mean it's it's obvious I mean we know the the things that it's we're, we're trying to overcome there and hopefully those can be ah uh, look at that see how nice and uh, easy that is to blend now that we've got some some build up there of some paint and some colors so much easier to do that here let's uh, keep going mm, might just grab some of the uh, radiant violet to do that and again just trying to work in some Jupiter style or Neptune style clouds some kind of gas giant style clouds here you can see we're just uh, taking our brush there trying to make sure that we don't have any hard edges and gunnies how you doing hey grim how the heck are you doing everybody please give grim nation hobbies a follow hey grim uh, if you could i know you gotta kind of come in and jump out right away but could you do me a favor and drop in your links for your youtube channel with all those uh, intro to oil videos because uh it's it's a good resource so yeah if you could do that that would be super would really appreciate that all right so now we're I'm going to start to work in. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's take it a little bit further along this edge, too. There you go. Everybody, please check out that link that Grim posted. Uh, I, I do think it's going to be a really good resource for you, so you should probably check that out. Get some more thinner on this brush here. We're using our fast matte white. Boom. There we go. Get the top of this so very, very quickly, right? We don't screw around. No fooling around on little stuff. Now, and of course, Eric, if you want to post uh, links to your Pinterest there or Pintogram <laughs> or uh, Pin, uh, let's see, no, what did we call it? I think it was Pintogram, right? Wasn't that the, the crazy name that we uh, sort of invented for it? Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll continue along this way now. Let's see if we can uh, work some more dark there. Ah, well, boy, Grim, I'm glad you were able to print something out. I've actually been printing out like crazy. This is just the, uh, this is just the basing bits. Seriously, there's no miniatures in there. There's just basing bits. I've been going absolutely berserk, and there's a ton more. I mean, I have months and months and months to catch up on. So yeah, we, we have a long, long ways to go for sure. Let me use uh, this one right here. And everybody, please check out Arid's Pinterest there, showing her fantastic artwork. I'm going to have to get me some more of that uh, Quinacinol Magenta in there. I think we're, uh, we're good on the Radiant Magenta, but we need some more of our quinacinol magenta I think there we go and of course we'll be doing our little spattery type stuff as well but just trying to create uh, some some clouds here now here we're trying to get some of the rocks obviously that are kind of protruding through the snow here, let's get some of the some of our dark strip white because we have this light right over here. Now it can't all just be that. Like I'll take a little bit of the. Uh, uh, I almost said Prussian blue. I'm so used to it being Prussian blue. So Dirk Danigan, if you wanted to post any links to some of the stuff that you've been working on, 
I know you had a chance to post some of those on the last stream. If you'd like to post some of those, I'm sure people will get a kick out of seeing that. Ah, uh, so Arid, uh, well, let's, <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so he wear that the cat girl French maid outfit uh, on the on the next week, on the next stream on the 29th. So if, <laughs> so if people want to uh, want to force a costume change, you can do that. Uh, so that's uh, again if two thousand dollars is raised. Here, let me let me make sure it's not all just our lighter color. We need more than just the light color there. Uh, we'll have to wait. We want some edge to that, but not necessarily a super hard edge to that. And now we're going to try and get a little bit of our lighter color on the other side of this. We'll let that again all mix together if possible there you go looky there ah thanks Pendrick so I think that will make a fun uh, future stream don't you think don't I think it would I sure as heck think it would now we wouldn't be wearing a French made outfit um, who, you know, you'd uh, kind of have a problem seeing that, given the lack of any other camera besides the pellet cam and the image cam here. So, uh, yeah, no, no French-made outfit here. But again, if you want to uh, donate to the kitchen fund, you have a chance to see somebody in one of those. So maybe, maybe steep tea. I don't know. You know what? I'm going to bring in a little bit more of our ultramarine blue there. Or Big Jim Slade. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's what we need. Big Jim Slade. There you go. He's perfectly made for that. Oh, gosh. Do we need some more of our... I'm going to try to do some battery stuff there especially since uh oh first picture time let's get a picture taken of this first again just want to have a little step by step of these things because uh fun to have now we've got one of these this is probably the one that we made on stream actually so you can see we took one of our regular craft brushes here snipped it with the scissors so I'm going to put this here. I guess we can do something like this. Zoom in a bit. So say we all. So say we all. Uh, inner excellence. How you doing? That's that's almost two baker's dozens right there. Inner excellence. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. You know what? I'm going to... Ooh, that's really... That's a lot of thinner right there. But we're going to start with this. Oh, let me just get a paper towel here somewhere. All right, so I think you'll be able to see this. Uh, here we go. And a little more battery stuff there. So you can see we have ourselves some stars now. And then we'll come back in. Get rid of some of that. <laughs> no time at all. Same over here. So that took... Uh, how long did that take to create a whole starscape? Didn't take very long, did it? All right, so everybody, if you're going to do that... Oh, and Dark again also posted a link there. But if you're going to do the thing with Arid, Arid's uh, donations there, you need to show some kind of a receipt so that it actually counts towards <coughs> towards the French-made outfit. Now, 
here. I think this needs to also be a little bit darker than that needs to be darker too. Which we have. We have our ultramarine blue here. There we go. A little bit darker. Same here. A uh, little more of that back here. Ah, this is the other place where I would like to have some... Ooh, it's a lot of Quinac. Ooh, he smokes. That's a lot of Quinac. Oh, magenta. Ah, much better. There we go. All right, tone that down. We need to do a similar thing over here. Now, you see how that's uh, left a little bit lighter? It's catching more of this uh, starlight here. Or sunlight, either way. So, Inner Excellence, thank you so much. As always, it's appreciated. So, Inner Excellence, I hope that you're doing well. Now, we're just going to soften some of those edges, right? There, we have plenty of wet paint there, uh, here to work with. I'm going to just zoom out one more. Grab me a little bit of this. Yeah, that's about right. Soften up some edges over here. Uh, no problem, Arid. Oh, geez, Arid. <laughs> Wish I could do that. Uh, maybe I can do that tomorrow. I don't know. Uh, it's, it hasn't really been time for that sort of stuff. Give me, yeah, a little bit more of my light there. That may need to be <clears throat> just a bit darker. Possibly with some of our violet here. Yep. Sure enough. It's kind of what it needs. And then maybe... A little more of this, too. Yeah, something like that. So now this starts to stand out a bit more. So again, this is our... We love to do our 2D art here, and it's been so long since I've had a chance to paint some spacecapes. I'm going to have some fun with this now. It's been years and years and years since I've had a chance to paint Spacecape, so I'm going to really enjoy this. Okay, and I'm going to have to get me some more of my Konak and all magenta out here. It'll be this. What is a Series 2 color? I don't think it was a Series 2. That was only a Series 1. But there you go. Oh, I'm glad the things aren't too crazy. They're inner excellence. Finally had a chance to start printing again. This is just basing bits. Seriously, all this stuff in here, that's just basing bits. And I think that's all just from Make It Epic Basing. That is a fraction of what I printed. And I've got something, well, it might be done now. I don't know, but I have something that's printing right now. And I'm uh, basically trying to run more shifts with smaller stuff. At least for the time being, I'm going to try and get some bigger things uh, made into build plates. And those will be kind of like overnight things that I print. But I'm going to try and print as much as I can of some smaller scale stuff because I can run potentially four shifts a day. It, that's not easy, believe me, to run four shifts of printing every single day. But that's kind of the level we need to do to get caught up here. So again, just to do a little bit of, there we go, a little bit of edge control down there too. We can, can alternate hard edges, soft edges, harder edges. Well, guess what happens? Everything moves forward, right, if you have those harder edges. Now, I've got somewhere around here. Now, we've been using that as a blending brush. I'm going to grab 
this guy. See if we can get some really, really intense lights in here in a couple of places. Just kind of trying to break up some of that fast matte white as well. Bingo there. Also, can see how much lighter our star can get. Might also... This certainly needs some more of our light here. There we go. That had gotten just a little bit too dark. I think that's a bit more accurate. Fade right over the top there. Boy, it's hard to believe that uh, we're not that far away from me having to think about uh, doing the planets, the ornaments, right? The ornaments are not that far away. Good grief. I uh, have to find those files so that we can maybe print ourselves out some ornaments. Now, before I do that... Hmm. Oh, the heck with it. We'll just use... Here's another filbert. Egyptian violet. Ultramarine, I guess. That should be a little darker up here. Just a smidge. Because the darker that is, I think the more this starlight's going to show up. Where's my blending brush again? I think this will serve as one. better and let's see if we can do our little star shaped and let's get this one going right here get okay, very very light brush stroke pull that out this way one's gonna go this way And then one's going to go this way. Let's go back. So we're going to reinforce some of this. We'll be bringing in our even finer brushes, like our, our little liner brushes too. Let's get this last one here if we can. All right, I'm going to take a quick, uh, quick image of that here. And what are we, about a half an hour? Oh, so we're 48 minutes in, less than an hour in. This had absolutely no paint on it. Wasn't even a drawing yet. So again, that's uh, less than an hour in. Not too shabby. I'm going to see if I can't bring in this again, my fast matte white. I'll move this up a little bit so you can see what's happening here. Okay. This has just a, a little touch of thinner in it. Not a, not a ton. Uh, kind of just enough to get that paint to flow. Just looking to get that paint to move a bit. Same back here. Let's just, nah, that's a little too much along that edge. That's okay. See? Can tone it down pretty darn quick, right? This could use a little more light, I guess. Right about at that level. Now that needs... Oh, here we go. That had way too much white on this side, because it's supposed to be a shadow area there. 
All of a sudden, I looked at it and said, mm, yeah, it can't be way all the way down to the level of the rock. That's too much. And we can refine from here, or not. Either way, you can refine it more, or you just say, no, that's, that's good enough. We'll be doing some more refining, of course, because uh, why not? Again, uh, to make it darker at this point, just relying on the Egyptian violet and the indigo. And you can see here, this gets broken up more into smaller shapes. Why? Because this is the foreground. We want the softer stuff to be less less of a hard edge in the backdrop. Closer you get to the foreground, the more we're going to want to make that edge that much harder. And we're going to do some of that here, too. Yeah. So again, looking for some harder edges Essentially, the rocks kind of showing through the snow here. A little bit of indigo. That's the Williamsburg indigo. Then this is the Williamsburg uh, Egyptian violet. So dark Dan again. Um, yeah, I didn't. Uh, unfortunately, with all the stuff here, I did not get a chance to do the painting video that I wanted to. I'm going to try and do a basing video instead. And I have a new curing machine for, for the prints, and I was going to try and do a video on that because it kind of is it's very helpful for me here, and I thought it could be helpful for some folks too. But they there's some things they need to know about it to make it a little bit easier to handle uh, so they don't have to... Well, you know how it is, go through the same craziness that I had to go through dealing with it. So yeah, we're gonna. I'm trying to make one of those videos. Did not have a chance to do it last night because it took so long to get that thing set up. Ah, so there we go. We're starting to get uh, more of our, again, that rock that shows through the snow. Like that, so a big foreground, middle ground, background, right? One level after another. So not as many hard edges back there as we have right up here. Ooh, another way to do that is to uh, make sure that there's some of that uh, ultramarine blue mixed in. We're just using one of our cheap old craft brushes here. It's a flat brush as opposed to a filbert brush, though, this time around. I think we got too much uh, too much thinner on the brush. See that? Look at this. See how this shape is still kind of connected together? But the whole idea of this is to show the rocks kind of protruding through the snow. All right, Steve. Well, thank you so much for the raid. I appreciate that. Everybody could please, please give Steve T a follow. That would be sensational. And Steve, you have yourself a good one. Appreciate the raid, as always. Glad that we had a little bit of 2D art for the viewers this time around. I mean, typically, again, that's what I'm doing on the Thursday late night stream. Now, tomorrow's stream is definitely going to be miniatures, so Saturday's stream. Those are going to be miniatures uh, only. Uh, could be some Conquest miniatures if I get a chance to do the, uh, the basing on them that I need to. Ah, there we go. See, that's some more of our landscape there. Uh, so Yanok, if you if you don't want to deal with the whole starter set thing, you really don't need a bunch. You really don't need a bunch. Indigo, key color, Prussian blue, thalo green, uh, Prussian. Yeah, I think we did Prussian blue. I mean, you can get the uh, thalo blue if you wanted to. Something like either the Williamsburg Egyptian Violet or 
I think it's called diazonine violet. That's kind of the more common, less expensive version. The, the red that we just discovered here, so something like a naphthol red, not bad. Not bad to have. Uh, Terra Rosa, another cheap color. Van Dyke Brown, another not expensive color. Burnt Umber, not bad to have. Now, of course, uh, we, we can get into the more specific colors like the Gamlin Radiance and, and stuff like that, but we're talking about the most common, I guess, colors. This is another nice one from Windsor Newton here. It's very inexpensive. It's called Perlene Black. It's a very dark green. So a really, really, really dark green. But those are sort of your basics, I guess you would say. Uh, now I use Mars Black. That's kind of a fun color to have just, uh, just in your repertoire. Should be not all that expensive. So that's a Mars Black. And then again, you've got the things like the Radiant Colors. Those are from Gamlin. Those are really, really spectacular. As we like to say, uh, they, they literally contain fairy dust. There's just something special about them. Something very special about those. And we're just kind of darkening down some of our clouds here. Smoothing out some of that. We're going to maybe hit the edge of this again. Put some, uh, perhaps some markings here on our little planetoid out there. Let's see what some of the other handy, well, brilliant yellow pale. Of course, that's a Williamsburg color. And the we, we do have a lot of gambling colors. This one's kind of nice. The fast matte white. Uh, not expensive. Not expensive at all. Uh, very nice color to have. Works very well. Now, we have, of course, our, our homemade fluorescence that we've done. We have a lot of specialty things as well. But uh, that's... that's uh, that's for maybe when you're actually really into the oil painting. You've gotten yourself pretty well entrenched. So here's that, again, that really dark color for our rocks. But as you can see, the edges there a bit softer. Now let's do a, another little photo here. Quick little photo. Again, you can check out the Instagrams. Now, of course, we have tons and tons of our color theory videos already. We got we have browns covered, greens, blues, reds, oranges, you name it. So the color theory and oil videos on the Patreon page, definitely a good resource to have. And we have, I think I've done 22, yeah, 22 color theory and oils episodes. So we've we've done uh, quite a number of those already. So sometimes you'll, you'll recover new new stuff, new paints maybe that we see. So here I'm using a little bit of a blending brush here. Tone down some edges. Tone down that edge. Tone down this edge. Yeah, it's all about the edges because if we were to just go ahead and do that, now you really see just how soft those edges are. You can see that that dramatic impact. These edges, whoosh, they come right out at you. This, not so much. Again, back here, not so much, right? Because it's all nice and soft. Bring back our color. Look what we have. Look at that. Some, this is, again, another one of those radiant colors. Uh, there's, I think there's nine of them all together by Gamlin. Uh, you could start with, I think, three of them. The green, the blue, and maybe the turquoise, no, and the violet. 
If you're just going to do three, I think those are your best three choices. I think if you're going to expand after that, probably the Radiant Yellow or the Radiant Lemon would be the your next best option there. Uh, the Radiant Magenta is handy. We actually do have that out on the palette here, too. So not bad on that color either. I mean, you don't need every single color. That's, uh, it's, well, I never had every single color with the acrylics either. I only used maybe about 20, maybe two dozen colors tops. That was, that was the extent of my acrylic paint collection there, basically. It was just a couple of dozen colors. That was it. Didn't need any more. Everything just got mixed anyways. Now here, see we're uh, starting to bring in some sharper edges here. The oils are really, really, really good at creating darker colors. I mean, that is really dark there, but here, of course, it looks very, very light. Gee whiz, we're enjoying darken that even more. That's a little bit more of our quinacrinol magenta. Look where we're holding this brush, by the way. It's darn near at the back of the brush. This is a long handle brush, too. No, nope, that's still got too much of that lighter paint in there. So I'm going to take my blending brush here. And we will tone some of this down. And it's a little bit of a stippling effect. That's all it is. Just a little bit of a stippling effect. Yeah, we'll break this up just a smidge right along the edge of that here. So this uh, hot press board, again, this is from uh, Crescent here. It has a little bit of tooth to it, not too much. That's kind of a... I know it sounds weird, but that's a very important thing, is it has a little bit of, uh, not like a canvas. It's not a canvas or a canvas board. That has a ton of texture by comparison. This does not have anywhere near that much texture to it. So here is ultramarine blue being mixed with... That might be a little too dark. I don't know. Maybe not. But there's some areas here where my shadow area is not quite so much of a shadow. Ah, there we go. The, the radiant blue, ultramarine blue. Work that in there. And some of this is still that original pre-glaze. Again, it's the same kind of stuff that we would do with our miniatures. Now, here, I'm really considering, I don't know if I want to, let's just see what happens. Okay, I don't think that worked out too badly. I was almost thinking of not carrying that ultramarine blue color across this way. But I see we have, do, we have some magenta on this side of the snow, so I think we're good to go. It was really what I was seeing down here. Maybe kind of, the, I don't know if I want that much of the ultramarine blue there. And Arid, if you want to post any links to your uh, your Pinterest or Pintogram, as, as, we, as we labeled it here, still one of the crazier moments on the channel, of course, the, uh, the Pintogram channel. Obviously a place for miniature witchcraft or something. I don't know. All right, yeah, a little bit of the ultramarine work its way into there. Okay, that's again, this is our shadow area. And everybody, please check out, again, the fantastic jewelry there. So, actually, uh, Aaron, how long did you stream tonight? Sorry that I didn't, ju uh, didn't see you there. I basically just I was doing all other kinds of things and I just ran in here and try, tried to start up the stream as soon as I could. Okay, again, we've uh, 
Take a little bit more of the darker blue. I might even go darker here. A little bit more of the ultramarine. Fascinating to see the ultramarine as part of a 2D painting. Uh, I wasn't sure. I mean, short of me doing some uh, seascapes, which I want to do, by the way. Don't uh, don't be surprised if you see me painting a seascape at some point. Well, more like sailing ships. Ah, so three hours, 45 minutes. And hopefully you got a ton of stuff done. Now, here's another case. Do I make this darker in here? I might go with a darker ultramarine there. Let me see if this is going to work. Ooh, wow, that's that's darker, all right. Maybe not quite that dark. So here we're just about at the two-hour mark. Two hours ago, this was a blank piece of illustration board. There was nada. There was Zippo. There was no drawing on here. Sir, there was no paint on here. That's for that's for certain. Okay, where's my blending brush? Is this is this the one here? Nope, this is the one. Again, we're just gonna tap, tap, tap along that cut down some of those edges there. Back to the, get that darker ultramarine blue. Oh boy, that is dark. That is certainly, wow, that's actually almost as dark as some of the rock color. He smokes. Ah, there we go. So yeah, that piece that uh, Arid, I'm sure, just showed maybe in the uh, Instas there, or the Pinstagram, Pinstagram. See, I just did it, just did it to myself. That was, uh, what, three weeks, three and a half, almost three weeks worth of work there. Try and darken that a little more also. See, we're trying to sharpen up that edge. But you can see that these are beyond the halfway point. Oh, just for fun, these are going to try and throw a little bit of the ultramarine on this as well. Especially along that edge. There we go. So let's see how that separates that. Just, wow. Let's do this little film noir as we take that away so see now all we have is edge contrast and value contrast so here again got the edge soft edges there soft edges here hard edge hard edge really hard edge and that even more hard edges also too you can see kind of the darkest value is starting to to get towards the the front surface here or the front of the painting and the idea is to draw people in, move them around, and then let them back out again. You can't uh, you can't trap them in there. If they get trapped in there, they're going to get real jittery. They don't want to get trapped into a painting or a miniature. Same thing can happen with a miniature. That was way too flat of a curve there. We needed to increase that curve a little bit. And then here again, just... Uh, Soften some edges on these darks. I think we'll do the same over here. Wow, man, that is, that is some seriously dark ultramarine right there. Holy smokes. And throw that out there. I'll just grab this. Once again, blending brush time. Just a little tap, tap, tap. That's all we're doing. That's all it takes right there. So we're kind of making this look like a, it's not just one flat wall. We want to have undulations in that, I think. Well, I'm pretty sure we do. Back to it again. Let's see if I can't work in a couple of uh, lighter areas now. That's going to be the radiant blue, ultramarine blue. Not enough variation, more of the radiant blue. This is 
relatively thick paint, I think you would say. Not a whole lot of thinner. Actually, there's almost no thinner on this paint right now. Practically none. Oh, uh, again, back to our lighter blue here. There, break that up just a little bit right down there. And then this, see, we have a big section here of... It's all kind of the same. I need to lighten this up or darken it. I'm going to try to lighten this up some more because uh might make it more interesting. There's our radiant blue. See, I'm using the side of the brush. So this uh, took a little tiny brush like this and just made it several times its size. We took a small brush, turned it into a big brush, just by basically laying it over on its side. Doing the same thing again. Look at that. See? Normally people just think of this as only drawing these little thin lines. Can be more than that. I'm going to... Uh, here, let me... Uh, uh, I'm not sure I want to do too much of that on our gas giant here, but I think it needs a little bit. And then... Uh, Back to my blending brush here again. Just a little, yeah, a couple little touches of that here. If we only have magenta on this. But again, the magenta here makes that blue stand out. So I need to uh, need to keep that in mind. Again, using the side of that brush. Ah, thanks, Deuce. It's, uh, you know, that's one of those things that I just don't even give a second thought to because of all the, you know, the years of the 2D stuff, and then I realize I have to sometimes really mention that for folks because it maybe don't necessarily see it happening. I know it sounds really weird. Say, why the heck are you just taking that brush and laying it on its side? You could just take a bigger brush and do that. It's, it's a little bit different. So again, everybody, uh, please check out the link that Arity Can Wife posted, and of course, give Arity Can Wife a follow while you're at it. Let's see if I can't maybe throw in a couple of more. Bits of our rocks there. Uh, I might try to do the same along here. Let me let me look at my reference here first. Yeah, Deuce, it's uh, it's like twice the paintbrush, right? Let me see if I can get I can get my picture back up here. Oh yeah, okay. Maybe break this up just a smidge more again with some smaller rocks and such in there. Yeah, do if I could uh, if I could manage electricity, <laughs> I'd have a lot more three D printers, wouldn't I? I'd be able to whatever the biggest, latest, greatest is, right? I could I could get me those. If I had that kind of knowledge, yeah, you bet. Whatever, whatever the latest, greatest, biggest printer is, right? Printing, uh, printing out all kinds of terrain. As I get some uh, more, you know what? I'm just gonna do that. Get right here to make that as uh, sharp of an edge as we can. What about this? I don't want this to just be straight up dark only. And oh, you know, we could do. Uh, I think we could maybe use with a couple of lighter stars in there. Let me see if we can do this here. Uh, we'll take our fast matte white to maybe do a couple little uh, brighter stars in this. 
because these actually they're not white and we just use where's our spatter brush Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. And, oh thank you so much decoy plus Hello, little hobbits I spark my ganja that's uh so uh aluvatar what what do we got going on here because there's like uh what, what's this doing over here and by the way the snow stuff here i don't know that the that just gets me thinking about Angmar and the Misty Mountains, and well, that just wasn't very fun up there. Thank you so much for that follow, Decoy Plus. Appreciate that. Yeah, Bithron, uh, I'm definitely in the wrong, was it? Oh, I'm in the wrong business, right? I should be an energy mogul instead of just fooling around with the whole art thing. Yeah, it's a, no way to make money, right? energy mogul totally different ah here we go see now we're pulling out a couple of brighter stars here uh, I would also have a much larger area <laughs> well let's put it this way somebody else would be editing my videos for me instead of me having to do all that yeah, somebody else would have that job. Somebody else would have to be setting up the streaming area for every stream. The lighter these get, the further back that goes. Also, these little points of light, they do count as sharp edges. So these uh, little dots right here, they are going to make this uh, st uh, little stirscape and the clouds there fall further background to the background here. Hey, Nary Field, nice to see you back. Uh, so, Nary Field, we're just uh, two hours and seven minutes into this. Two hours, seven minutes, that's all it took. Having a blast with this. Boy, this was a heck of a lot easier than uh, the acrylic version for sure, I'll tell you that much. So, Nary Phil, I was uh, finally able to print up some stuff. I was uh, printing up not uh, two miniatures, but uh, also tons and tons of basing bits. Ah, thanks, Nary Phil. I mean, there's the there's the low level stuff like trying to get everything ready, like these uh, the the reference pictures, some of the additional screens that I throw on here, and then of course uh, some of the other scenes that I try to set up. Uh, of course, with everything going on here, I still have not had a chance to do the big rebuild yet, sadly. Well, that, that has changed its scope a few times. Yeah, there we go. A little bit of light right along that edge there. Thank you so much, Bithron, for doing that. Uh, Nary Field, actually, what I'm going to potentially be doing uh, in the just in the room with Kathy is taking tons of Daz, almost like literally tons of Daz air dry clay and just pressing it into those, uh, gr uh, what is that, uh, Woodland Scenics molds so that I have some stuff for, for basing those Conquest figs. Let me see if I can go more with the fast matte white. How long is it? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, there you go. Something told me I could actually make that a little bit uh, more of the white there. Bring, ah, yeah, we'll make a bit of an edge right there. I almost have to think of this in some ways like it's water. This is uh, very different from the previous space game, right? But in some ways, very, very similar with what we did with our backdrop here. Uh, you actually, oh, Nary Phil, you know, the, he just reminded me, I'm going to have to at some point, well, especially now that it's getting to be cooler here, 
I need to start baking tons of, oh, I love to be baking bacon, but I need to bake a whole ton of the texture roller sheets so that I just have a nice stockpile of those. So here, we're just trying to reinvigorate this with some of our little points of light here. We had to wait till we were done doing all of our uh, softening of the, the space gate there. Of course, a lot of these stars here, that's just the spatter that we did with a chopped up brush. Uh, and again, oh, and uh, congratulations, Nerefield, once again. Congratulations on that. That was uh, quite the sudden change. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that, it's kind of like what didn't change. So, yeah, Nerefield, uh, uh, just about every possible thing all changed at once for you there and uh, again we're all hoping that it all works out uh, I'm sure it will uh, bits run I don't know I might have to snag some of that from the store tomorrow too might just have to snag some of that now of course uh, so we we have the GoPro camera. Uh, do do we do we use the GoPro? We t we call this a baking channel or a cooking channel as well or a cuisine channel. Uh, maybe <laughs> that's uh, is that one way that we could start showing our culinary prowess. So yeah, Nerefield, that is quite uh, that is one heck of a change. And it's, it's so sudden, too. I don't know, uh, well, be, uh, I don't know, Nerefield, would you say that the sudden change is almost better instead of uh, having a lot of time to think about it? Where you don't have hardly any time to react at all and it just sort of happens? Now you're going to take this and once again soften up some of these edges there now of course uh, bacon not exactly the cheapest thing in the world right now that uh, also another reason but then again too uh, with never quite knowing what she can eat or not eat on a given day that's a that's a pricey thing and there we feel the, it was kind of like this alignment, right? But just really glad that all worked out for you. Yeah, so near, I, I think the next space scape that I might want to do is uh, just a little bit of an earthscape of some kind or something with an earth-like planet on it so that we can do the the whole clouds and everything. See uh, what that's like doing that in the oils. Remember the, oh, and Mars. Yeah, we haven't painted Mars yet either. I think we have to do a, a painting of Mars too. Although, I don't know, maybe I'm going to have to get into uh, painting the uh, planet ornaments early so that I can have those for a, for a Christmas tree. Uh, so there, and again, this one uh, down there in the lower left-hand corner, that is one that I painted many moons ago. See what I did there, huh? Yeah, you don't get that uh, linguistic gold just anywhere. So yeah, we wanted to have a little bit of a kind of the dust cloud thing happen, just like we had on this one here. And I was hoping to get some of the magentas in it. Looks like we were pretty successful at doing that. And then it kind of set up all these nice cooler colors here in our shadows. 
Uh, yeah, near refill those, uh, oh, it was a Highland Miniatures, I think. And it was just the simple round ones, right? Those were the most fun. I did paint one of the Santa Claus ones. I mean, that was neat, too. I think I painted a snowman. But those uh, the planets were really extra fun, no doubt about it. Yeah, Nary Phil, that's, well, that's going to be, uh, that'll be a thing, too. And uh, hopefully you have lots of, uh, well, I don't know if you have lots of the homemade ornaments, or at least uh, those those ones that just have the special significance, right? Uh, you you certainly have plenty of Christmas trees there, no doubt about that. But hopefully you've got uh, just some of those uh, sentimental ornaments, of course. All right, I think that really helps set the edge on our snow up there and here. Now that I got the little liner brush, I think now we really need to start to come up with some nice sharp detail things going on here right in the very front lines Let's see if we can do that here same there get a smaller sharper details here we get less and less as we go further and further back Ah, that should be fun, Neri Felt. Now, what's interesting is that uh, when I was a kid, they had all kinds of really interesting shaped Christmas lights. Then for the longest time, it was just basically the same boring si shaped Christmas light. Nothing special about them, just the little twinkly lights, and that's it. And then uh, now they have all the really nifty, nifty stuff again. Christmas lights in all kinds of different shapes. Little snowmen, little nutcrackers, or whatever. Let me, ah. Uh, no, I'm going to leave that in shadow, but I need to break that up too. So we'll do this little bit right here. And then I'm going to have to come back in with the... And we've actually, uh, Nerefield, we've been using an awful lot of the ultramarine blue here. Which is pretty wild. There we are. Ooh, that's a fun, fun color right there. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm glad you're able to get all the bulbs replaced on that, Nerefield. Okay, see, we've carried that through here. We had to, it was weird. It was like it was afraid of the edge of the painting somehow. We had to push it through there. Uh, yeah, here we'll do the same. A couple of other areas, like right in here. See, that's all just kind of, uh, yeah, let's, let's do this. It's a little bit of this ultramarine blue in here. Breaking that up into smaller and smaller details. Of course, well, I haven't had a chance to, uh, well, <laughs> Halloween decoration, not quite sure how that's going to work here, but I'll see what I can do. Let me, uh, there we go. Again, that's softening that up just a bit more. Maybe, yeah. I'm going to get a little bit more on my darker ultramarine here. Maybe a bit, well, that's kind of a lot more, but let's see what happens with that. Right in here. And then this this edge there, it's still too sharp of an edge. Let me see if I can't... I don't know, maybe we'll take our spatter brush and use that as more of a blending brush. Let's 
So we've really been focusing on things. Uh, well, where's our ultimate? Oh, here it is. Been focusing on the Williamsburg. We're also using the Williamsburg Indigo because it just the intensity level of those is just crazy, absolutely crazy. And even the with the ultra, sorry, the umber. Even the burnt umber from Williamsburg, just some really nice intensity from the Williamsburgs. You, you just, I mean, as as much as I like the the Gamlin and the Windsor Newton, there's just something a little extra special about the Williamsburg. Now here again, we've got to try and soften the edge between these two. And of course, the ultimate, it's only a series two. And I think the, uh, well, the indigo is a series three, but I think the umber is only a series one or two, right? Let me double check that. That's just a series one. And of course, uh, you get them on Dick Blick. That should also cut down on the price there. So all I'm trying to do here is just to. Uh, can't manage that bit of an edge right there. Might do the same back here. Yeah, something like that. Can soften this edge. That one too. Uh, this way, and of course, well, we have. Uh, can we've been trying to do as much printing as we can. This is just basing bits. There are no miniatures in there. That's just basing bits, reeds, trees, branches, uh, a bunch of ferns for the uh, conquest miniature miniatures that I want to base. That's too, I don't know if I really want that light going that far up there. So I'll just take my blending brush here and we'll just uh, get rid of that. Uh, well, geez, Nerefield, uh, I wonder if they have the, well, I guess they'll be in-store sales. Now, uh, Nerefield, do they have things where you can, I don't know, have, uh, get the coupon or something like that, and it, it's better for in-store versus just, you know, the online stuff like I do. Okay, here's the next thing that has to happen. That needs to kind of fall over the edge here. Let me again grab more of our fast matte white. This, I think, starts to make a little more sense. If it comes up and over that edge instead of just being a little bit of a ball there. That was not making much sense. Uh, it, what's kind of funny is uh, Nairfield, after all of these years, I don't think I've ever been inside a Dick Blake art store. Maybe one time we were, maybe we were in Minnesota or something, I don't know. But I'm, it, it's very possible that for all these decades, I've just been, well, originally ordering on the phone and then online. So it's very possible that I've never actually been to a Dick Blake in person after getting so much stuff from them. Not gonna no no I was tempted to do a little bit more of the light there not gonna do that here we will try and get a little bit more of our lightest light out into the here, I'm also gonna try and bring this out a little bit more part of it is as you can see that that paint has set a little bit more it's much easier to do that. Remember when we initially did that and the paint was pretty fresh, it wasn't quite so easy. 
So there we've extended those out a little bit more. Hmm, one out now. We're gonna st stick with the uh, stick with the fast matte white and really try to do these edges here, especially this one. I don't know something weird there. We've got to figure out something. Hey, Space, <laughs> Space Nifty, look at look at what we got for you. Space Nifty, how you doing? Yes, look what we have for you here. Of all things, right? See that? Of all the things. We got it we got you another spacecape. So I mean here was uh this was our first one, I think at least three weeks ago. Ah, boy, they, you know, actually, uh, Narrowfield, I, I thought they were more of a Midwest kind of a thing, but I guess, uh, I guess they're just everywhere. Well, that, that's just fine, because that means they're going to have more of the stuff that, probably, that I'm looking for if they're everywhere. So, Space Nifty, I hope that you're doing well. Space Nifty, I hope that you've been able to maybe get to some painting of late. Uh, actually, here's the, the latest. This was our last stream right here. Actually, I gotta, these are all dry. Now I can get my, my landscape stuff on them. A couple of more of the Kurs look. Horsies there. Uh, well, actually... Uh, yeah, Space Nifty, I was just trying to type one stupid word on the phone, and the stupid phone, it changed it about ten times. No matter what I did, it just kept changing the word. I said, no, that's not the word that I want. But it kept changing the stupid thing. Let me, uh, all right, get back to our, again, our fast matte white here. See, that's all got to be in shadow, but still, I need a little something here. See if I can't throw a little bit of a lighter edge along that. Hmm, let me, uh... Ah, bingo. That's, I need a little light edge there. That was just such a sharp edge. That was too much. Yeah, I figured Space Nifty, just lots of stuff, a lot of people... Just seem to have a whole bunch of things going on that I can definitely understand for sure. Yeah, Space Nifty, oh my gosh, there is uh, so much stuff to paint here. Really hoping, oh, again, tomorrow. Uh, definitely won't have that conquest stuff ready to paint tomorrow, but hopefully by Saturday. I think tomorrow I'm just going to have to hustle through some kind of a Song of Ice and Fire miniatures, maybe to, to paint up. Alrighty. Because we are just about out of prepped things at this point. There is very little left. Now that right there, that needs to be lighter, but it cannot be this light. Oh my gosh, this would be way, way, way too light. Uh, well, back to the... It's a radiant blue. And that might not be too light. Bit of a dry brush, hey, dry brush, right? It's not just for, you know, we use it on the miniatures all the time, but guess what? You can see it's blending with what's here. Oh, yeah, that was, uh, Kathy used to work that rent fair way back in the day. 
At least that that's the one I'm thinking of. I know there's probably a few. That, that might have been uh, in the summertime. Yeah, because this is the time for the Bristol Renaissance. No, not Bristol. Well, Bristol, I think, is just over now. But the Minnesota, that's the one. All right, yeah. I'm going to throw a little bit more of the lighter stuff here. Again, that is the... It's the radiant blue here, like so. Yeah, that okay. It's good. It's a little bit lighter of an edge there. It's better. It looks like it's white. That is not white whatsoever. That is nowhere near white. Let me see. Do I lighten this up? No, that, that's too much of our light here. We're going to go back. Something more like that. Again, just dry brush right over the top. Maybe a touch of something back there. Where's my... Blending brush. There we are. See, so we're just gonna look at this. We're just uh, this little crazy swirl right there. That's just enough to soften all that down. I'm gonna try and come back with a little bit more of the again the radiant blue into this area. I don't want it to just be a solid wall of dark there. Uh, some kind of variations. Some kind of variations. Definitely necessary. Okay, there we go. Just there was a little something that was missing there. And we'll just lighten this up a little bit more. Again, another spot here. Poof. So that's a little too much of the, the white. I'm going to try and break that down a little bit here. Again, with this somewhat darker blue. There we go. That softened out. It was just too harsh of a blam. All of a sudden, we got hit with all that light stuff there. Uh, well, Neri feel, um, I don't know, do you feel, I don't know, like this whole, the new adventure here, it kind of is, uh, provides a little bit more security too, and you feel like, okay, you can sort of indulge in the painting a little bit more. I, I guess, uh, you know, do you really dive into like a, like a big miniature painting project, or you just say, okay, it's been a while. It's been a wee while. I'm going to just try something that's a little bit mellow here. Not too crazy. Now, uh, I'm going to see what happens here if I could... Ah, this is it. That's going to be too dark, so let's try to lighten that up. I don't want that much thinner in it, though. That might be just about the right level of dark that I'm looking for. So, and here for, it's really just uh, really fantastic there. Uh, bringing in a little bit more of, this is the uh, violet, a little bit of the blue in there, so make it even more violet. Yeah, look where I'm holding that brush. Towards the back of the brush, not the front of the brush. Another little softening of that edge there. So it's a little, look a little bit, we have a little bit more uh, cloud action here than we did on the original one.
boy, oh boy, between the, whatever the, la oh, that's right, that was that, uh, f we were doing the fluorescent magenta. Never so much, flor uh, the quinacrinol magenta in quite a while. There, we go. that was too much of just the white there, I'm trying to make that more of a, oops, sorry, a magenta here. Something like that. There, so we're getting, trying, trying to get some of these swirls in here. Now I think what I might end up doing is heading uh, Spec Ops way in just a few minutes here, since I still have a bunch of things that I've got to do. Speaking of 3D printing. Got to get that next build plate going for overnight and uh, take off the last one and try and see if I can cure the stuff that I, I already printed here. Yeah, uh, yeah. well, the Nary fail, that's, that's it, right? The leap being so drained, being so drained from every single day at work there. So I'm just... Glad that those stress levels get cut down, because that's no good. That it really can't, well, it cuts down on your, if anything, your creative uh, instincts, right? And like you said, the energy and stuff. It will definitely really hurt that. Now, I don't want to lose some of that, that bluishness there either. That's a that's a decent strength of the magenta right there. Yeah, we'll bring a little bit more down here. I can always again you know, hit that with my blending brush to soften that up a little. This uh, cloud right here, I'm gonna try and cut into that just a smidge. Yeah, Space Nifty, the the craziness of the corporate world where everything is just, I don't know. Of course, the miniature painting world can be pretty crazy too. But the corporate universe is just, uh, even if it's just a three-person corporation, but yeah, Nerefeld, I hope that you can, uh, the sewing too sounds like that's another nice way to, to get some relaxation in, for sure. So hopefully I remember to take enough pictures along the way. We'll do obviously one more of this uh, at sort of the finished state here. But hopefully I've got at least seven or eight, or ideally about nine. The, the drawing of this is not, not super fancy. There wasn't much to draw, but we've uh, certainly been doing a lot here with uh, just the paint. So yeah, there's a, a lot of crazy elements to the, uh, to the miniatures world as well. We've certainly found that out over the last 22 years. I just bring a little bit of the uh, violet down here. Uh, so uh, Gandalf the Grayster, uh, you can see that uh, that picture down on the lower left-hand side there. That was a spacecape that I had done many moons ago. I think I did it once in watercolors, once in acrylic. So I just wanted to give it another shot here in oils just to see uh, what kind of fun things that I could do. Uh, Gandalf the Grayster, usually there's a lot of, we have kind of a general outline, but nothing is known in advance. It's just kind of like, well, I think that's what I'm going to want to do here and here and here. And then I just kind of react. Once it starts to hit the uh, surface here, you just start to react to that and say, okay, that it needs uh, this or like here, I want to get some more of the magenta over here because I see all this, I want to reflect that. If this is snow and ice, right? I want to reflect some of that magenta over here. 
just like with the non-metallic metals right uh, the miniature tells you what needs to go there and uh, see so we could need to just reflect a little bit of that magenta there I might see if I can't reflect even a bit more over here especially with our little blending brush there so again trying to get some of that down into here maybe even a bit more something like that so again like here uh, right the you can see the red reflecting on that metal uh, same on this side right on his chain mail down by his foot there uh, the that basically dictates what's happening same thing here right a lot of greens in those golds why because it's reflecting the snow color which is creating that cooler color and well even here same thing the the sky earth is influenced by what's around it right that it, this is reflecting this armor plus the the landscape around him ah well space nifty maybe uh something that's really 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 simple because uh, sometimes the, the big giant projects, they're just kind of daunting, especially if uh, you're trying to kind of get the mojo back and, and get back into things. Now, of course, uh, Bithron has been, well, trying just some different things. You say, okay, you know, I'm on an MCP kick right now. Well, maybe I'll go back to some terrain. Or I've been doing uh, the Flames of War vehicles for a while. Now I'm going to shift over and back to max or something like that so that can also help to change in the subject matter can't hurt at all and of course um, well that's that's the other thing I really look forward to is if I can do that finally that change uh, or we can maybe be live streaming some terrain actually I think that this other setup idea that I have will make it much easier to do something large like that instead of me having to completely change uh, this one area I'll essentially have two filming areas in here at least that is the plan let me see if I can get just a little bit there we go some of that lighter magenta there see kind of flattening this all out Ah, oh, thank you so much, Space Nifty. Appreciate that. Of course, yeah, I think I want to try... Uh, it's been a while since I've been able to do the painting of Mars. Of course, we had such a blast with that uh, ornament. I think we're going to have to do a painting of Mars as well. And then, of course, a little bit of an Earthscape. Should be very fun. All right, yeah, I think in this, uh, definitely a lot more stuff happening here than in our previous trial. Let's see if I can't get a little bit of the darker tone in here. Just a little something that maybe that's about it. Let me uh, take a blending brush, soften that down again. Sort of like what we do with the tattoos. Oh, here he is. So here where we felt like the tattoos were getting a little bit too uh, epidermal instead of subdermal. We uh, took the blending brush there and just knocked those down a little bit. Yeah, it's, just, it's kind of a nice way to keep things fresh, right? Same thing here on this bust. So you see all those spots there? They were all... Each one of them had the equally same hard edge. I went in with the blending brush and just sort of, look at, see some almost disappear. It's the same thing that I'm doing, stuff like this and around here. Same thing we did in our, uh, in the sp space keep in the background. All right. Our last little bit of our fast matte white. Boy, this stuff does. It sets pretty quick, and it, well, it dries pretty quick, too, because it has those alkids in it. All right, there's our nice little horizon line there, which, again, is above the halfway point. This is not straight 
divide it in half. This is above the halfway point. Very important. I think I will sharpen that. Let that edge be softer, maybe a little bit more light in this one area here, just a smidge more there too. And a little more over here. Blending brush. Any brush can be a blending brush. At any time, you never know.